So these women tried to prove that male privilege is real. Man or woman, who has a harder life? Woman. Women have a harder life? Yeah. Woman. Yeah. Woman. <laughs> Why? Because we have to deal with inequality for a long time and currently do so as well. What do men have that women don't? Basic human rights. Which right do? For instance, um, payments. And you guys have free, I'm not gonna say what it is, but we don't have like the same access, for instance, to birth control. Like our- Men have access to birth control? No, 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 Viagra. For instance, it, your plan, your medical plan covers that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do I even need to say how silly that is? She thinks Viagra is a, a contraceptive, it seems. And my medical plan doesn't cover birth control. A woman who disguised herself as a man to find out how it is to live as a man commits- Well, I still have to pay for condoms, so. Due to the psychological scars of how difficult life was as a man. Nora Vincent, the author of Self Made Man, has died by assisted suicide. She was a radical feminist who believed men lived on easy mode and tried to prove it by disguising herself as a man for two years. Instead, what she found out is that men actually have it very hard and wrote a book about her experience. In fact, the experience was so bad that she had to stop after 18 months because she was starting to hate women due to how bad the women treated her when she believed she was a man. Men are suffering. They have different problems than women have, but they don't have it better. They need our sympathy. They need our love. And they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. Do you think women understand what it's like to be a man? Not at all. No clue. No idea. Did you like being a woman before, Ned? I did, I did but I like it more now because I think it's more of a privilege. It's funny, and in that clip, I kind of mentioned it, but I think that if more women had to experience how, how, how men live, I think they would start developing misogynistic attitudes. I, I really do. They think that they don't like the way men treat them. That's pretty wild. And one thing that I've noticed, I came across it the other day. It's like a bunch of women that transitioned to men thinking that life was going to be much easier, thinking that they were going to have more opportunities. They were going to be more seen, but turns out they have less opportunities. They feel more invisible. I mean, th they say these things in these, in these posts and they go down these dark, dark spirals, realizing it was all a lie. Now they have testosterone. Now this is the existence they've chosen to live. No, 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 no. And Nora Vincent, you know, she found out real quick. And she did end up committing assisted self-deletion. But I believe one of the reasons was because of this experiment, it kind of caused her mental health to spiral. I believe she said she always had kind of issues with depression and these things. But this experiment just essentially put her back on that 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 dark path so rest in peace to Nora Vincent she did initially do it trying to prove that there's a male privilege but then ultimately realized no 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 that is a lie rejection indifference and unwarranted hostility far more than any woman could even imagine I yeah and real quick one of the foundations of like propaganda is to accuse your adversary of doing what you're doing so when it comes to like feminism and stuff Basically, they're accusing men of having like a male privilege when in reality, right, typically that privilege is going to fall more on women and not men. I can believe that the interview in her book was more impactful with men than with women. Men responded favorably to her showing cause and effect about gender beliefs and behaviors and were receptive to her conclusions on the emotional level because of a common ground of evidentiary findings and logic-based thinking. Women being more emotion-led we're more likely to discard evidence and logic and stick to their feelings. No matter whether the feelings prove justified or unjustified based on the evidence that Nora lived through and logically presented to them. The lessons she learned broke her as both a woman and a person and is a testament to how much of women's empowerment is actually leading to women's self-destruction. What, what's wrong? What is it? How I love being a woman. Nobody told me how lonely being a man is. I had closer friendships with random women I met in the bathroom before I transitioned at clubs because of how open women are than I've had in my eight years of transition. This woman is not built to be a man. <laughs> and then you transition and you're just a guy walking down the street that people cross the street so that they're not near you. And friendships are so much harder to build. She's basically dipping a toe 
in the pool and crying because it's too cold, while natural born men are either just outright drowning or just trying to keep their head above water just a little longer. It's and the thing is, if this woman who, <sighs> no, I don't even want to get into that. If this, this, this person here, this woman were to be able to get friendships with men, they wouldn't be as fulfilling as the actual men because her brain is wired in a different way. So the, the friendships that men are going to be able to give you if they choose to be friends with a, a transgender, you're not going to find it as fulfilling because you're wired different. You, you are, This is why you can't just, just change genders and everything's going to be a-okay. You're, you're wired completely differently, so male friendships will never be able to fulfill your female brain. It's just, it's, it's, it's it, <laughs> unbelievable. Isn't it crazy we have to, this is something we're having to deal with in our, in our day and age, in our world today, is having to understand this is not possible. This is not going to work. I mean, we, now we have this, this woman who identifies as a man coming on and crying about how lonely she is. When do you ever really see men do this? You really don't. You don't see it. It's actually not hard for men to make friends. It's a lot harder to get respect as men. And if you are an emotional transition man, you definitely won't make a lot of friends because our brains are wired differently and the experiences that we have as men are way different. Someone transitioning didn't grow up with the same diversity and struggles as men. Mm. All yeah, man, imagine coming into manhood as an adult. That is going to be shocking. It's like it's something you need to experience as you grow up, and it's kind of like sprinkled in your life throughout the years, but to just jump into manhood, jump into the deep ocean, jump into the deep end. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's brutal. Also, now that you've cried publicly about your problems as a man, you are now seen as a weak man and have lost attraction from women, yeah. lost respect from other men, yeah. and have successfully amplified your isolation. Bingo. Barney Mack, nice to meet you. What is it? I have a Comedy Central a half hour special, and I'm also the voice of Lenny on the Cartoon Network Joy Cab. All right, well, let me write all this down. Okay. Thanks, bro. Can I get some change for that? Do what you do. Quit picking pussy hairs out of your tongue. So, this comedian thought the only reason why people aren't laughing at her jokes is because she is a woman. So, she wore a costume and pretended to be a man. Let's see how her performance went. I love animals. I would never buy any, uh, I would never buy any product that have been tested on animals. Never, because I like to do that myself at home. Make sure the control group is isolated. You don't know what they're doing in these labs. Very loose guidelines. This lady wants me. I can totally tell. I know I'm weird. I'm a weird dude. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I used to always carry a man purse, a purse. You ever carry one of those? What? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? A purse. <laughs> I love it. This is so bad. I loved it. I loved that purse. But I was losing it. I'd lose it everywhere. I was always leaving my purse around. You know, I kept losing my purse. But I just started carrying everything on my person. My pants. I only lost my pants a couple of times. So that's really working out. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Wow. Morning back, ladies and gentlemen. you. It was good. Didn't you see me laughing? I know, but you were la I felt like you were laughing at me. I wasn't laughing at you. That's, I was laughing at your jokes. And how you had that was good, man. I'm telling you, that was good. No, that, that was good. Don't get, don't be upset. Look at this. This is a big issue. Now I don't know their relationship. I don't know if he's trying to sleep with her or if he already has slept with her. But this mindset, what's going on right here, is the exact reason why she thought that people weren't laughing at her because she was a woman. This guy here is lying to her, and she's never going to get better now because she thinks she is funny. You're telling her she's funny. And this is, man, this is why so many of these women are so delusional. 
we don't tell women the truth. Men and women. We're, men and women don't tell women the truth because, A, they'll either end up crying, and nobody really wants to see people cry. I mean, maybe there are some people out there, but nobody really wants to see people cry. And women are going to get offended by the truth. They certainly can't handle it like men do. That is 100% fact. They are very repulsed by the truth. And if you can ever hear how women talk to each other, just gassing each other up, filling each other's heads with gas, just lying. This dude's doing the same thing. This is why she thought they weren't laughing because she's a woman in the first a woman in the first place. Because you're lying to her. Tell her the truth so she can get better. We gotta stop doing this, man. I just shouldn't be a comic. No, listen. <laughs> you guys like I'm I can't you. do it as a man, I can't do it as a woman. <coughs> you were great. You were great. You're you're great as a woman. You're better as I a think woman. Somebody's gonna come out here and see like some dude fucking no. cry his eyes out. No, I'm telling you, you were great. Listen to me. I'm serious. <laughs> just, like I was I, I don't was, even care about this stupid documentary. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I just like I think she was so deluded into thinking nobody laughed because she's a woman. Came to find out she's just not funny after all. The next step is to accept that reality and do the only thing she can do, and that is to improve her performance. One of the comments says, it's always hard when someone realizes they aren't a victim and that their failure is their own. Everyone has an excuse and someone to blame for their failure these days. The sad fact is most people live in that kind of denial. The fact that she somehow genuinely felt that her male disguise is realistic enough to convince <laughs> the entire crowd is really the actual joke here. That's her true. crying at the end just goes to show that it's not about anything to do with social justice or equality. It's for their own personal validation. Male privilege is such a lie. It's, it's so backwards. It's so wrong. And it's funny because we're being accused of something that we don't have. And the accusing party absolutely has. If you enjoyed that, if you could leave a like, I'd appreciate it.